If my viewers are anything like me, then their particular fetish in porn is when they can tell the art has suffered to make it. If that's the case, I should probably be uploading this video to Pornhub instead of YouTube, because after making two videos to sin this game, I feel like I've been repeatedly stepped on by Stiletto Hills for the past month. Donald shouldn't recognize Sephiroth. Cloud never gave a description of him. Yeah, I know you can fight him in the first game, but that never seemed to be canon. And even if it was, you fight Sephiroth alone as Sora. Ain't Sephiroth the one who's supposed to be the dark part of Cloud's heart? That certainly doesn't describe their relationship in Final Fantasy VII, even metaphorically. But the weird thing is, this idea is used for another set of characters in this series, Ventus and Vanitas from Birth by Sleep. And in that game, being separated from the darkness in your heart is such a big deal that it endangers multiple worlds and puts Ventus in a coma. Am I playing Dissidia or Kingdom Hearts right now? The line is getting a bit blurred. Okay, fellas, you've gotta go find Riku and Kairi. But Leon and the others are friends too. Don't worry, there's already lots of help here. We'll take care of this fight! That's hardly the most pressing concern right now. Sora is the Keyblade Wielder. Fighting Heartless is what he's supposed to do. And you want him to do the thing he's been doing this entire time with zero luck? At least point him in the direction if that's what you want. This is especially stupid given that Mickey knows what happened to Riku and that Riku doesn't want Sora to find him. No need to linger on this shot for so... Rather than continue with this battle, Final Mix spends time on a scene where Zimnus slowly walks down a flight of stairs so he can look at Aqua's armor, even though it has no bearing on anything in this game. Then you have to listen to these two patch up a plot hole and chain of memories that also doesn't matter. If they wanted a slow and pointless section in the game, they could have just adapted Disney's The Black Cauldron instead. I forbid it! Forget this Forget talk, this of, talk doors of doors and the heart of all worlds. What's more, this added scene ruins a surprise that Diz is Ansem the Wise, since it plays audio of Xehanort and Ansem speaking together, and Christopher Lee's is a voice you are not going to miss. Remember, the organization's made up of nobodies. Right. No hearts. Oh, we do too have hearts. That goes against everything that we know about nobodies and what makes them different from Heartless. And ironically, Demix ends up being right since that's another detail change in a later handheld game. And that detail throws into question why the organization is even carrying out their plan in the first place. Why would Organization 13 even send Demix to fight Sora? Their plan requires Sora to defeat Heartless, so capturing or killing him would hinder Organization 13. Did the writers really think they were going to fool anyone into believing Goofy? Friggin' Goofy is dead. What an introduction. I think it sums up perfectly how confusing this Xehanort mess eventually gets. Wait a minute. Now I know. Mickey already knew what Xemnas looks like from his painting. Why would seeing him in person finally jog Mickey's memory of where he originally met him? Mickey met Ansem for the first time in the same meeting, and he had no trouble recalling him. This 1000 Heartless battle really makes all those scenes where Sora, Donald, and Goofy have their backs against the wall due to a handful of Heartless seem pretty stupid. Where's Kairi? Where's Riku? I know nothing of any Kairi. That's strange. One of the other Org 13 members appears right after this and talks about how they have Kairi in their possession. Yet you, their leader, know nothing about it. As for Riku, perhaps you should ask your king. Also, how do you know what happened to Riku? The only people who know are the real Ansem and Mickey. Even though Mickey jumps into the portal after Xemnas, they don't continue their fight. This is just an excuse to get Mickey out of the way. Xemnas is using you to destroy the Heartless. That's his big master plan. Every Heartless slain with that Keyblade releases a captive heart. That is what the organization is after. So what are those guys gonna do with your hearts? I'm not telling. I'll tell you what they are doing, but not why they are doing it. Axel has every reason to help Sora at this point now that he's on the lam from the organization. Where is Kyrie? Look, about Kyrie. I'm sorry. The last time we saw Kairi, she was with Axel. At some point, she was taken from him off screen and is now being held by Organization 13. Why, you ask? I don't know, since they don't need her for anything and never use her as leverage over Sora. The devs couldn't figure out a better way of including her in this game, so Kairi is simply kidnapped a few times. Also, Sora can still say Kairi's name despite being taken by a nobody. I'm not sure if a living person counts, but at this point it seems like photos is the only word that can be stolen. We'll ensure he receives the maximum punishment. I'm sure Sora is reassured to know that the people who kidnapped Kairi from Axel will punish Axel for kidnapping Kairi. Take me to her. 
Is she that important to you? Yeah, more than anything. Show me how important. Please. So you really do care for her? In that case, the answer's no. Ha! Pranked. Rage of the Keyblade releases those hearts. They gather in darkness, masterless and free, until they weave together to make kingdom hearts. And when that time comes, we can truly, finally exist. Doesn't Kingdom Hearts already exist? It's the heart of all worlds. How can you just make another one? And Kingdom Hearts vaporized the last guy who tried to mess with it. Am I even supposed to be able to make sense of this? What in the world do you think you're prattling on about? Well, at least someone said it. Oh no! You just took on and won against 1,000 Heartless. A few nobodies should not have you recoiling and needing Maleficent to take one for the team to rescue you. Maleficent does her best Gandalf impression, but then her fire fades away and her with it, and it's right back to where this started, with Sora staring down Syx. Yes, Sora. Extract more hearts. He doesn't have to use a Keyblade to fight Heartless. He can use any weapon and avoid releasing stolen hearts like Goofy and Donald do regularly. You were just lucky Sora is as dumb as you. Sora knows the truth now. The more heartless that he defeats, the closer he is to becoming our perfect puppet. Are you guys called Organization 13 because you steal all of your villain plans from Final Fantasy 13? If so, I'd like to fight Organization 7 instead, please. Are you sure that defeating him won't derail the organization's plan? If he is to die so easily, he is of no use to us. But then who would be? Not a lot of Keyblade wielders running around. Yet. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. It's not in my nature to hold back. You realize that your boss is saying that he's fine with Sora killing you, right? It's the gang from Twilight Town. There's Hainer, Hans, Olette, and, uh, um, Roxas. No, the name just popped into my head. If the name just popped into your head, would you really be that certain that it's the correct name? And it also happens to be the name Organization 13 members keep referring to you with. But I guess you've selectively forgotten that you've already heard this name. Riku left Sora a sea salt ice cream and a photo of Roxas like he knew one of them would be a world gate key. And of course, it's the ice cream. What if it melted? Or Donald finished eating it? Sora would be stuck in the realm of darkness. Also, I would assume that a world gate key would at least require an item from its own world, which neither of these two are. In order to look for Riku and Kairi, Sora must return to all the previous Disney worlds he visited and found no signs of either and look one more time. Yeah, we're in the filling time until the finale portion of the game. I guess this is what happens when you wipe out half of your villains in the Game Boy Advance spinoff. Now this game is just reusing scenarios. heading for the city. Somehow the four of them beat the flying dragon heartless that has a head start on them back to the city, and by a good amount of time too. If only Shen Yu knew that he could have gone into the palace by climbing a pillar, he might not have been defeated here at the gate. Also, what are you gripping? It's a smooth wooden pole. Mulan had to use a cloth and rocks to climb something similar in the movie. Mulan wouldn't have fallen more than five feet. That hardly calls for slow motion dramatics. This is a hallway, yet Zigbar snuck around them with nothing to obscure himself. Riku came to warn the Emperor about the Heartless Dragon and then left, knowing full well that the Emperor's troops would be out of their league. I mean, he could have dealt with it himself, but chose to spar with Sora on the mountain instead. Under the sea. Under the sea. Darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. While this is a song from the movie and therefore better than the songs written for this game, having Sora sing Under the Sea rings hollow, since he's a human from dry land, and Ariel knows this. So how is this supposed to convince her to stop thinking about the human world? If you won't listen, then I'm not gonna sing at all. I've been watching that movie that fell into the sea, Sebastian. The Shape of Water. It's given me ideas. Sora had to use magnet magic to move a boulder off a statue. And you were telling me it requires a more powerful magnet spell to retrieve Eric's locket, which is 1 the size from between two rocks? The rose. My rose. What? That? He took it? Again, a nobody steals something and no one has a problem saying the name of what was stolen. For such a cool concept, they abandoned that idea right after they introduced it. No one hurls like Gaston and presses girls like Gaston. No one gets left out of their Disney world like Gaston. He is especially good at not appearing. Ten points for Gaston. And one sin for Kingdom Hearts 2. When Kingdom Hearts is ours, we can exist fully and completely. So you see, Beast. 
That's why we need your heartless and your nobody. There's no shortage of heartless. Is one more going to matter? And you would still need Sora to destroy him. Do you really think Sora would do something like that to Beast? Not to mention, Belle is a princess of heart who have the ability to save someone once they turn into a heartless, like Kairi did for Sora. <laughs> Well, that had to be the most anticlimactic end to a hostage moment ever. Here's a boss fight that can screw right off. Maestro, music. I think Lumiere just hit play on the soundtrack because I see no instruments anywhere. Luxord, a nobody, steals all the cursed Aztec treasure and still people can mention the treasure by name. No, I will not drop this issue. Some might try to argue that not being able to use the name of a stolen object was only due to Twilight Town being a simulation and not because the photos were stolen by a nobody. But Riku stole a money pouch back then and that didn't cause a glitch, which leads me to believe that this is specific to nobodies. The interceptor off the starboard bow! Will took the interceptor back to Isle de Muerta by himself Self to discover why the cursed pirates were back. I was under the impression that the Interceptor took at least two people to sell. That was kind of a point in the movie. And the Interceptor is a Royal Navy ship. How can Jack and Will just continue to swipe it whenever they need it? Don't remember inviting you. Jack said that before he even saw Luxord teleport in. Harley! Excuse me? Harley? It's a bit of the pirate's code. Anyone who invokes parlay must not be harmed till negotiations are complete. Yeah, but they're really more like guidelines than actual rules. Oh no! We can't stop the curse unless we got all the medallions! I think this game is a bit confused on how this curse works. Getting the medallions back is just one part of it. You also need the blood of the one who took it. Fire! Who just fired the cannons on Luxord's command? This is Jack's ship, and the only others on board are Will and Elizabeth. They survived this, and wash up on Isle de Muerta of all places. Why is the skin resting right on you three? Maybe the reason we're all okay is because we're not from this world. That's interesting. Curses don't work on you if you come from another world. Okay, explain why Sora needed the Olympus Stone to counter the curse of the underworld that was draining its power back in Hades' underworld. By sheer luck and writer's convenience, some of the nobodies who took medallions came here to Isle de Muerta, and you get to enjoy tracking them all down. Now to break that curse. Well, there goes that rule. You can break the curse without a blood sacrifice. But someday I'll gather a bloodthirsty crew and come to take that blade. Chance by then, I'll have the way to wield it. I'll take off five sins in Kingdom Hearts 3 if they remember this detail. Otherwise, I'm adding five. Ariel, you know how dangerous humans are. You don't even know him. Neither do you. I am going to get through to you. And if this is the only way... So weird. This scene was already used in the last game when King Triton blew up the crystal that unlocked the keyhole in Atlantica. That outburst cost him his trident by driving Ariel into Ursula's hands. What does he expect to happen if he does it again? You have got to be kidding me. You're going to fall for this again? I really feel that you should speak slowly to Ariel. You helped kill her. She's evil and cannot be trusted. All I have to do is sign? You are so dumb. She can't breathe like that! Considering how fast Sora just pulled Ariel to the surface, she's probably dead from the bins. Ursula magic those clothes onto Ariel when she turned her into a human. How did Eric's pendant get into her pocket? The only clothing Ariel wore before transforming was a clamshell bra. If Sora wants to keep an eye on Ariel, he could always turn back into a human and walk around on land. Beats waiting for Ariel and Eric to take a walk on the beach. At last! At last? This isn't your first time stealing the trident. <laughs> I'm not sure why Ursula is so confident. She was defeated the last time using this same exact trick. Flotsam and Jetsam! Boy, oh darling, strong as the tide. Sweet as Poopsie is hasten to my side right now! I suppose this could have been worse. I can't really imagine how, other than adapting the Little Mermaid too. What'd that mouth do? Dr. Finkelstein's lab is not exactly wheelchair-friendly with that flight of stairs. So the plan is to lure the present thief here by leaving presents in Christmas Town's plaza, right in front of Santa's workshop where it already stole presents from. It hardly seems like you would need to place bait outside the source of that bait. Sora, please use your imagination and picture a slightly older Kyrie. How could you mope on a momentous day like today? The Underdrome's back, and you are gonna fill the stands. Is he? Hercules couldn't even fill the stands in his own Colosseum. After all, your fans won't settle for anything less than a certified hero. 
There is no reason at all for Hercules to fight in Hades' tournament. He was only fighting in the Colosseum because the people coming there to watch would have been hurt had he not. But down here in the underworld, that isn't the case. Everyone is already dead, and this is an obvious trap. And I assure you that the great Hercules will be there, otherwise... You'll never see your girlfriend again. You sort of have to kidnap her first before you can use Meg as bait to force Hercules to fight. You keep your end of our little deal, and I'm willing to overlook a transgression or two. I understand. Defeat Hercules. This makes the third time Hades has attempted this plan, and it already failed before with Orin when he refused you the first time. And if you could control Orin with that amiibo, why didn't you do that to start with? Since this statue lets Hades control Orin, he should have kept it with him instead of leaving it unprotected. I warned you right at the get-go. You don't compete, you lose the girl. But Hercules did compete. Time for the epic showdown between Hercules and Hades they've been building up for two games. Ah! Got to love when a villain forgets his surroundings that he would know by heart and backs right off a ledge. How are we cool? He was what? Yeah, come on, Phil. How about it? Let me see now. Well, you're not wise enough. Not quite seasoned enough. Sora just snapped your true hero out of a depression and beat the Lord of the Dead. How high are your standards, Phil? All Hercules has done is fight some monsters in a coliseum, after all. If every star in the sky is supposed to be another world, how did the sky change here to form a constellation of Sora, Donald, and Goofy? Jafar's lamp was locked in the palace, yet somehow the peddler snuck inside and rubbed it, and he didn't even know the lamp contained a genie. He just thought it was a nice lamp. Awfully big risk to take, sneaking into the palace is still a lamp. Why even continue running your shop after receiving treasure like this? And why sell your treasure? Who in Agrabah can afford to buy golden vases and piles of gold coins? Don't let him get away! I'm not sure if that was off-screen stealth or teleporting to be a dick. Regardless, the peddler disappearing when there is only one exit that Aladdin is blocking is a sin. Give me the magic lamp, Aladdin. This is supposed to be a flashback, but this scene never happened in the first game. Never once did Jafar demand Aladdin give him the lamp. Iago stole it without Aladdin noticing. How about giving me a challenge next time, AL? Okay, there is an evil genie named Jafar. Remember him? Threatening your friends. Going to stick around and help with that? This flying carpet section should have been left on the cutting floor, along with the entire Agrabah level. You gotta understand! It wasn't my idea! It was Jafar! He made me bring you here! So Jafar's plan was to force Iago to lead Aladdin out of Agrabah so he could take it over while Aladdin was gone. And once inside the ruins, Iago would accidentally spring a trap that he wasn't aware of that would cause the place to collapse. And the activation for the trap is just knocking this thing over. There is no way you can plan for someone to do that. Not to mention Aladdin has a flying carpet. So thinking this trap would kill him is straight up stupid on Jafar's part. You can just fly straight up and escape the ruins. Carpet is making this way more dramatic than it needs to be. Come on, let's get Jafar! And who asked you? Sora can be surprisingly judgmental when it comes to people's mistakes other than his best friends. He certainly doesn't treat Riku this way despite what he did. The peddler rubbed the lamp and freed Jafar, which makes the peddler Jafar's master and entitles him to three wishes. But that didn't happen. Jafar didn't give him anything and just went off on his own. And instead, an Organization 13 member bought the peddler's silence with gold. Jafar is a genie, which means he has no free will of his own. So how is he doing any of this without someone wishing for it? Aladdin sent Carpet to rest after arriving back in Agrabah. Yet here it is with Sora when the fight against Jafar begins. But I can't hold it any longer! Oh, that's good! Genie orgasm. You might want to make sure none of that sparkly stuff gets on you. Thanks to you clowns, we're back to scavenging scraps for a living. That shouldn't be a problem. Hyenas are opportunistic predators and have no issue eating a carcass. We know your dad was a great king and all, but now it's your turn. Remember what I taught you. You gotta put the past behind you. Actually, you taught him to ignore his problems and live a life of no worries. But it was a catchy song. Tell me about Scar's ghost. That's the one that only hangs out around Freddy Cats. Everyone is giving Simba a hard time over his inaction to the threat of Scar's ghost and keep comparing him unfavorably to Mufasa. Like, what exactly would Mufasa have done against the ghost? It's no use. I'll never be the king my father was. Simba already got over this insecurity. Mufasa even appeared in the sky for a heart-to-heart. Can someone Worried by a silly old ghost. Ooh, Simba, the do-nothing king. You three don't need to provide lines when Scar's ghost shows up. He does that whole put down Simba thing all on his own. Also, your voices would fool no one. This section could have been way better had Scar's nobody appeared and caused trouble instead of a ghost, which I don't even understand. How does a heartless have a ghost? Take a bow, Donald, Goofy, and Sora. <gasps> 
combo breaker. Seriously, this song is the only time their names are said in a different order. I'm not taking a sin off for it, but just pointing out how simple it is to avoid repetition. A freaking air bubble is the world gate key. Not the trident, not Eric's pendant, not Ariel's singing voice, but a freaking random air bubble. What's happening? A new pathway has opened. No, there hasn't. This world gate opens up zero new worlds. So don't be sad and always know we'll come back soon to say hello. Just kill me. And then them. Turns out the MCP is using the data in that computer to crank out Heartless. Even though Tron changed the password, the MCP still managed to gain control of the system and starts transferring Heartless from the Tron world into Hollow Bastion. You might be asking yourself why there is a machine here to do that specific task. You might also ask why a few more Heartless is such a big deal when previously this place fought off thousands. I don't have any answers to those questions, and neither does the game. Sid can code an MCP eradication program in a matter of hours. Mind you, Sid has never once accessed the MCP or the computer it runs on, so he is building a program from scratch with no idea what he needs it to do, where files are stored, and a whole bunch of other things he would need to have first-hand knowledge of before attempting this. If only the MCP had turned off the scanner to prevent users from entering. It can control things here in the real world, like the security system. Finished? Would be, if it weren't for the old loon's magic. Old loon, you say? Merlin was standing there quietly. What was he doing to disturb your work? Merlin blasts Sid's computer knowing full well that he was programming the MCP eradication program on it. Luckily, Sid finished a second before Merlin screwed them all. No good. Leon, let me try. Because only Aerith knows how to insert a disc into the drive. This is very strange. That's Merlin's magic! You can download magic? I'd say see you in the sequel, but I saw how that movie went. How would it make you feel if someone hugged you, then jumped into a bottomless pit? Greetings, friends. System is up and ready for user input. Tron now exists as a digital office assistant. Hey, Tron, explain the plot of Kingdom Hearts 2. You know, this town had another name once. You've been living in Hollow Bastion for a year while restoring it and you never returned to calling your hometown by its proper name? And in fact, forgot it until Tron dug it up in the files? Orge, aren't we here because of the picture? No, you're back in Twilight Town because the scanners were picking up two Twilight Towns. Come on, let's go find this mansion! Sora awoke in that mansion. He would have walked past all the computers and machinery inside it back then. You wouldn't even need to find it or even wonder about it had you spent even a little time looking around after you woke up. We came here looking for Kairi. You saw Kairi pulled into a portal by Axel. What makes you think she would be inside the mansion? Then those white things attacked us. Nobody show a surprising amount of mercy for anyone who isn't Sora or Roxas. We thought this place might be the gateway to some kind of alternate Twilight Town. I made that pouch myself and I still have it. So... There shouldn't be two of them here. Sora having the same money pouch is not enough evidence for you to conclude there is an alternate Twilight Town. Sure, it's weird, but not so weird that it would lead you to cook up an autistic conspiracy theory about an alternate digital reality to your own. And this is the trophy Cypher gave you. Where were you keeping that? You don't just carry a statue that's half your size on you in case you need to explain mirror worlds. This only brings up the question of how did Diz know so much about insignificant details like what Olette's money pouch looks like that he could replicate it in his simulation. Not to mention, there are a lot of creepy insinuations about Diz if he knows this much information about everyone. Everything makes sense. It does? I'm glad something in this game finally made Sora question if it makes any sense. I found out where Ansem is. Ansem the Wise. The real Ansem. He snuck into Organization 13 Stronghold. About that, Mickey. You got into Organization 13's base, discovered Anson the Wise was there, then somehow left to come tell Sora. But the only way into the world that never was is through the digital Twilight Town, which you didn't know about. So how did you get back here? And how did you hope to return to the world that never was later? I can't go any further without a password. Anson the Wise loved ice cream. Okay. What's the name of the flavor? I'm starting to get the impression that Diz is the kind of person who sends a lot of money to Nigerian princes. We'll be here to hold down the fort. I like to think Pierce and his friends are still in that basement, because Sora and the gang never return to tell them everything's fine now. For whatever reason, inside the digital Twilight Town exists a portal to the world that never was. This can't be explained. I don't care how deep you are into the Kingdom Hearts lore. You can do whatever you want with magic and multiverses, but computers and digital worlds require some grounding and rules on how they work. It's no use! Again, Sora has beaten thousands of enemies in a single battle. A few nobodies should be nothing to him at this point. I kidnapped Kairi. But she got away from me. Too bad we never got to see any of that. Axel's suicide explosion should have killed Sora along with the nobody since he was standing in the vicinity as well. I wanted to see Roxas. He made me feel like I had a heart. It's kind of funny. 
You make me feel the same. Well, I wonder why that would be. It takes a few games, but Axel survives this. The world that never was has a lot of prime real estate for a world inhabited by a few nobodies. There's even an overturned delivery truck blocking a road. You can't exactly have a difficult to reach world of darkness that isn't supposed to exist if Amazon is delivering to it. Or does Amazon treat its workers so poorly that it will force them to deliver packages to a literal existential hell realm? I'm not sure what Roxas is hoping to accomplish here by attacking Sora. He's already joined with him, and killing Sora would leave him a broken and empty nobody like the rest. Sora can recall the Keyblade whenever he wants, yet runs to get it when Roxas knocks it out of his hand. And Ro Roxas, being a Keyblade wielder himself, knows that a wielder can recall his Keyblade, yet he thinks pinning it to the ground is enough to keep it there. Just in case it wasn't obvious enough, the game actually spells out that Roxas' name is an anagram of Sora. There must be nothing better to do in this town than eat ice cream on the roof. This is where you lock up an elephant, not a teenage girl. Kyrie could slip right through those bars. What are you going to do with us? You're the fire that feeds Sora's anger. Keeping Kyrie here is the dumbest thing Organization 13 could do. They need Sora to destroy Heartless to create Kingdom Hearts. By keeping Kyrie here, you've guaranteed that Sora will come here as well as Riku, possibly disrupting your plan. Kyrie and Namine holding hands for some reason allows Sora to create a bridge to cross the chasm to reach the castle. Is there nothing a Keyblade can do? Organization 13 has no further use for you. Now all they need is one more helping from the Keyblade Bearer. You just stated Organization 13 has no further use for Sora, but clearly you still have a use in mind. Take it. That easy now, huh? Just, here's a Keyblade. Not to mention, this creates a glaring plot hole with how far the organization went to get Roxas, and then manipulated Sora just so they can have a Keyblade wielder free hearts if it's this easy to wield one. There was never any reason to wear those bandages over your face to begin with, was there? I was obsessed with thoughts of revenge. I can't help you with revenge. Really? You seemed pretty into revenge back when you thought Goofy was dead. I asked him to find a young man named Roxas from Organization 13 and bring him to me. When I told him it would help Sora awaken from his slumber, Riku left without a word. After Maleficent and Ansem, we can surmise that Riku is really easy to talk into doing things for you as long as you mention Sora. When Riku brought Roxas back to me, he was introducing himself as Ansem. How my heart ached. I could only laugh to hide my shame. Also, laughing made me look evil, and they were still trying to hide the plot and my intentions back then. I cannot see any reason to actually stop Zimnus in Organization 13. They don't actually seem to be threatening anyone. They want to create Kingdom Hearts so they can exist again. Because being nobodies makes one partial to philosophy and existential crisis along with the whole not having a heart deal. And destroying Heartless benefits everyone. What exactly is the threat? Aside from kidnapping Kairi, which was counterproductive to the plan. You and Riku never came home. So I came looking for you. Sending a letter in a bottle and getting kidnapped twice does not equal, I came looking for you. Riku. It's Riku. Riku's here. I looked for you. Sora didn't have this strong a reaction to seeing Kairi again in either game. What's this gadget for? It's a device to reclaim Kingdom Hearts and encode it as data. Only in this series could someone come up with a plan of downloading a moon and file compressing it. It's time to da 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 Ah, oh, forget it. With Luxord's accent, this is more of a fancy a game of Gwent scenario. I don't get it. Why has everybody been calling me Roxas? Because, Sora. Roxas is your nobody. My... nobody? But that's crazy. I never turn into a heart... Somebody call Mensa. Riku made his job of capturing Roxas a lot harder than it needed to be. He had Roxas beat, but instead of restraining him, threw Roxas's keyblade next to him and then stood there until Roxas woke up, forcing Riku to release Ansem's power to beat him down again. Why yes, it is a JoJo reference. I'm not sure how the power of Ansem would be enough to overcome Roxas, who is just as powerful as Sora who defeated Ansem. Roxas. I wish I could meet him too. You did. You fought him not long ago. The process of encoding hearts is incalculable. Damn it! I knew I should have paid for that WinRAR license. Run, my friend. It's going to self-destruct, and anything could happen. It takes several minutes for it to self-destruct, and you stand there aiming at the entire time when you could have run. My heart is telling me what I must do. Please allow me to do what it says. No! Riku! His heart's decided. We can't change that. His heart has decided on suicide, though. When we see that in reality, we call a hotline. About to self-destruct apparently means it has several minutes, long enough for a slow, antagonistic conversation before it reaches criticality. That explosion gives Riku his original body back. 
He even put the blindfold back on him that he took off right before becoming Ansem. Ansem the Wise did say anything could happen, and anything just happened to mean the best possible outcome imaginable. Be gone from here. Leave these creatures to us. If you thought the live-action Maleficent movie was a bad experiment into redeeming her character, this game beat it to the punch by a decade. Some characters are better off evil. You can usually tell which ones because they have names that literally mean doing harm and evil onto others. I'll have to start all over again. Warriors of the Keyblade, go forth and bring me more hearts. No other line proves what a terrible plan this was better than this one. Xemnas really can't do anything without a Keyblade, and now that his Kingdom Hearts was destroyed by Ansem, he has to resort to begging Sora to do something he has no reason to do. Square Enix got a little ahead of themselves using lightsabers before Disney even owned the rights to Star Wars. Heed me, Kingdom Hearts. Lend me your power so that we may be complete. Ansem tried this in the first game and Kingdom Hearts was like, nope. And Ansem even had Billy Zane's voice and still couldn't convince it. Look at that! Kairi saw and pointed at the door to darkness before it even appeared. Didn't you lock that door forever from both sides? And opening this door is supposed to be bad news. Mickey and Kairi were knocked back through the door to darkness by Zimnus. Yet after Sora defeats Zimnus' second form, the two of them are back even though it took three Keyblades to open the door a minute ago. You're coming back with us, right? How am I gonna face everyone? Face everyone, the only two people you know are Sora and Kairi, and they already know the story. The hell? Pluto is here. How? This is a balcony hovering over a dark abyss, and you can see everyone standing on it. You would think it would have been hard for the party to not see the giant space dragon in the distance. There's a random hover bike that seats two people here in the realm of darkness. How convenient. Did you get that outfit from Cruella de Vil? The PlayStation 2 never topped this final boss battle. What would that even do to Xemnas? He doesn't have a heart to unlock. End of the road. You got out of this place once before. Why be so nihilistic now? These two are stuck in the realm of darkness. Whatever will they do? Oh, there's the exit. Sora and Riku were trapped behind the door to darkness after Xemnas attacked. Then Mickey and the others thought the best course of action was to return to Destiny Island and hope that Riku and Sora would turn up there. Also, how did they even get to this world? They would have to open a world gate that leads to it first, and none of the current gates Sora opened led here. If it was this easy, then why didn't Sora go see Kairi long before she was kidnapped? What's left of me now? <laughs> All right, I guess that's another feel you earned. Hey, what's up? Look. Prequel baiting, sequel baiting, and side game baiting. Everything makes sense. It does? 